and we are live for our special Miramatsu edition of A Screw Loose. We're really excited to be here tonight with Jeff Buick from Miramatsu America. He is the co-owner and lead repair technician there, here to answer all of your Miramatsu questions. And we have so many tonight. We were so thrilled with the amount of uh, people who came in with, with great questions. And I think we're gonna blow some minds this evening with <laughs> just how much <laughs> there is to know about Miramatsu flutes. Um, so thank you so much, Jeff, for being here. We're totally you thrilled. Bet. I feel privileged to be invited to be on the show. So uh, I'm happy to be here. Excellent, thank you. So we're gonna just give um, our, our modified disclaimers in that our opinions are our own. Um, and that if you have any questions about anything that um, you hear tonight, feel free to contact Miramatsu America or one of us and we'll be more than happy to clarify or answer questions about that. Um, one very quick uh, thing to say that to any of the techs out there watching tonight, we have, Jeff has been so incredibly generous with his time that we knew that we had so many special tech questions and we wouldn't be able to get to them all tonight. So he is going to come back next month on our Patreon. So if you join our tech level Patreon, by the end of this month, you'll be able to get in uh, on a live Q&A conversation with Jeff to ask him all of your Miramatsu questions. Um, and thank you, Jeff, again, that is just incredibly generous. You're doing such a service to so many techs out there. It's, yeah. Well, I love your guys' video podcast. I'm super happy that you put this together. I know it takes a lot of work and energy, so I'm happy to be here and to uh, participate. So. Great, thank you so much. So right. let's let's kick things off. Let's uh, okay. let's get started. <laughs> so let's get started. yeah, I'm, so I'm gonna make you big, Jeff. And uh, while I do that, can you <laughs> give us a brief history of Miramatsu flutes? I think I can do that. That'd be great. Let's see. <laughs> my screen. All right. And okay. can you see my screen? Uh, yes. yes. It says Miramatsu oh. America. Very pretty oh, head right. joint. It is. That's us, and that's a pretty head joint. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to start with a brief history of Muramatsu flutes, and uh, and then we'll walk walk through Muramatsu America and, and our training program and some of the des uh, design of Muramatsu. So here we go. Here is the founder of Muramatsu flutes. This is Koichi Muramatsu. He founded so Muramatsu flutes in 1923. So that means we're getting really close to our 100-year anniversary. That's exciting. Hopefully we'll be past COVID days and everyone will be able to get together and celebrate 100 years with us. So um, he was um, an artist and he was working as a musical uh, instrument repair technician uh, for the army band and was really infatuated with the flute and wanted to bring modern flute making to Japan. And he did that and grew the company over the years and um, in, um, just instilled a design philosophy of slow, continuous improvement, making handmade flutes from the highest quality materials and using innovative des design to um, really achieve the best possible product. And he continued to lead the company into the 1960s um, before uh, passing away and his son, uh, Osamu Mur Muramatsu took over the reins and continued the same traditional philosophy of continuous improvement, Kaizen. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then he led the company into the 21st century before Akio Muramatsu took over the reins around uh, mid 2000s. And he is the current president and CEO of Muramatsu Inc. Um, He's the gentleman on the right here. Uh, maybe if you've been to an NFA in the past 10 years or so, you've probably seen him walking around. He's quite tall and he's usually around the Muramatsu booth. Um, he's always happy to uh, meet new flutists. So if you see him, please stop by and say hello. Um, so that's the Muramatsu story um, from a family standpoint. You'll hear um, family talked about a lot when, um, when we discuss Muramatsu, um, and you'll see it on our social media, the Muramatsu flute family. Mm. Not only is it a family-run business in Japan, um, 
they just feel that all the flutists, even those that don't play muramatsu, are, are part of their extended family. They're always happy to invite people to their factory in Japan, uh, or not, not always the factory, but the <laughs> store in Japan. Um, they're based uh, out of um, Tokorozawa, which is about, uh, about an hour outside of Tokyo is where the manufacturing facility is. And then they have a beautiful retail store and repair shop <clears throat> in Shinjuku, uh, which is a, um, an area of Tokyo. And they always welcome people into the shop. Um, that is so like that, the stuff of dreams for me. I yeah. would love to go. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, One day. If you can get over there, I highly recommend. Group, group field trip. Oh, please. <laughs> yes. If you are a remote <laughs> podcast, you know, take, take it overseas. There we oh, go. we're doing a video <laughs> diary. Four of us on a plane for 16 <laughs> hours. <laughs> that would work. Oh, my goodness. That's oh. going to come with like ratings. So, <laughs> Muramatsu um, obviously sells um, flutes all over the world, and they're probably the um, the largest producer of, of professional flutes. They sell around 5,000 a year, um, you know, mainly in, in the Asian and European markets, but obviously it's in North, North and South America as well, and Australia. Um, so that's a, a bit of an overview of Muramatsu. And as we transition into talking about <clears throat> the Muramatsu America family and the origins, um, You'll see some pictures here from 1975. Uh, the gentleman up here playing the flute is Irv Monroe, who is the, um, the founder of Muramatsu America. He was also the principal flutist in the DSO for 40 years. And um, this journey to Japan in the, in the 70s happened because um, a friend of his was looking for a high quality flute to import into the States. And, um, they were searching and searching and hadn't found the right instrument. Mm. And um, one day in uh, 1975, um, mm. Irvin overheard someone playing on Muramatsu and he said, excuse me, could I, you know, could I try that out? It you know, sounded beautiful. He had never heard of it before. And, um, and so, you know, he, he was really impressed with the quality of the flute. And wanted to learn more and after a lot of hard work they were able to get in contact with Muramatsu in Japan because back in the day a lot of the um, flute manufacturers were part of larger trading groups so it wasn't easy to make mm. direct contact. He traveled to the factory mm. and continued to be really impressed with not only the instruments but just the overall philosophy of the company and um, you know just their attention to design and, and improvement of the flute. And so that started um, kind of a journey of, of bringing Muramatsus into, um, into America in the 70s. And then the 80s hit. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> very, very, uh, <laughs> nice boat party with um, Irv up here in the, the white t-shirt, his wife. Uh, Susan Monroe here, in the nice 80 sunglasses, mm -hmm. and <laughs> my wife is over here sporting a short haircut, but uh, that's Dana. She's now Hi, also co-owner of, uh, of Muramatsu America, and, uh, and is that she James Gulbar that she's in uh, And uh, uh, like operations manager, and uh, so then from the 80s, we hop to the 90s. And that's when um, Irvin was asked to be the representative for Muramatsu flutes in Japan and officially kicked off the beginning of Muramatsu America. So um, that started the distributorship for North America. Um, and that takes us into a growing family here. Uh, this is present day with Mr. Akio Muramatsu sitting front, front and center here. And um, this is at one of the conventions. Our, uh, our family always grows a bit at conventions with uh, kind of the road crew and everybody helping out. And if anyone's ever called yes. Muramatsu back here in the sunglasses, well, everyone's got sunglasses. <laughs> uh, that's Val, right here. Val and is a, Val. Val is a goddess. Knows Val. <laughs> or, or anyone that's going to be in it. 
So um, she is definitely part of our family, our Muramatsu America flute family here. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and this is the building that we um, run the business out of. We're in Royal Oak, Michigan, which is um, just, it's a suburb of Detroit. It's maybe 10 minutes north of the city. And uh, this is where we conduct, conduct our, um, our group technician training course that we run in July. Obviously, we couldn't do it this year, sadly. And um, we'll have to wait and see how things are looking next year before we, make, before we schedule any new, new courses. But um, that's a look at what Muramatsu looks like. Um, Susan and Irvin actually live upstairs here. And then our, um, we have a retail uh, shop inside here and um, a, a test area in the back and then three of you are familiar with the uh, area that we run the training in in the back there too. Yeah and that's just a little fun side note that that building is kind of an architectural um, uh, wonder and it's been featured right in a few like yes, yeah, architectural true. magazines and stuff yep. um, so you can it's look it up a, and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah they, they designed the building it used to be a um, just a one story warehouse. And they had the dream of kind of living um, more central, more in an urban environment um, rather than in the suburbs and, um, and being able to have their house and business be there and kind of separate, but together. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so that's where- There's they, an uh, elevator. <laughs> there is no, there's actually the two levels are, act, are not connected. <laughs> Uh, you can see that the red portion is actually standing on cement columns. Yeah, it's so yeah, cool. It's really cool. <laughs> Sweet pad. So, like Marmot, who always inviting people to come to the shop. Once COVID is over, <laughs> we really invite everybody to stop by. We, we love to meet new flutists, new technicians, um, anyone that has an interest. So, um, stop by and say hi. Mm -hmm. awesome. All right. So, um, Let's get a little bit more techie. Yeah. So in um, 1999, Muramatsu made a change to their pad system. It was kind of a revolutionary change where they went away from a traditional felt pad. Um, and for, for those that aren't technicians, a traditional felt pad is usually uh, kind of a thick uh, or like a cardboard-ish backing with a piece of natural felt wrapped in quote unquote fish skin, the yellow skin that's on the pad. Um, and that's been used for many, many years, decades. And um, it's found on, on, on the majority of flutes, I would say. And traditional um, shimming techniques are used on it that didn't translate to this new pad system. And so the instrument was making um, progress uh, Muramatsu instrument once we went to the new pad system but we found that technicians didn't know how to properly service them and adjust them to keep them in original playing condition or, or optimal playing condition so um, it took us a little while but we we created our our own technician training course it started um, I think our first class was in 2012 and uh, I worked with technicians in Japan, also Paul Rabinov, who's instrumental in helping us with our training because he does the one-on-one -on -one training out at his shop in La Crescenta, California. Um, him and then a few other technicians in, in the States um, kind of bounced ideas off of and started to generate the manual um, that would lead the training sessions. And, um, and like the flutes, it's kind of been continuous improvement where we add more to the manual every year. Rachel, I see you have yours there. <laughs> you know, all right. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's thick too. It's not any like four page little no, endo. Yeah. Tons of info. <laughs> Getting yeah. thicker. So I try and add yes. more stuff to it as, um, as we learn in the classes what helps for demonstrations. Um, mm -hmm. But so it started in 2012. We, we do one group training every summer where it's usually um, somewhere around like seven or eight technicians that are in for training. It's not for brand new technicians. It's we expect that you have experience in 
repair and um, and that you can then take that experience and understand the new pad system and how the techniques are different. Uh, so far we've trained about 40, uh, I'm sorry, about 70 technicians to date. Um, and uh, usually the format is Muramatsu has been so cooperative and um, willing to help with this. They send two technicians every year. So uh, we have Mr. Shota here and Mr. Shinizu over here. They're um, doing real-time demonstrations and then we always try and allow all the technicians that are there for training to do hands-on um, experience, hands-on techniques, trying to um, reinforce what they just saw. So, um, and then the uh, technicians will check the work, give feedback, and um, really try and walk you through why there's different techniques, how to do them correctly, how to make sure it's stable. Um, yeah, and it's um, it's a four day training for the um, for the Michigan uh, uh, school to allow people time to travel in and travel out because we've had um, people from Canada, Kim, uh, and others, and then all over the uh, United States, Mexico, we've had Chile, Argentina, um, many different countries. So we're trying to trying to cover um, North and South America so that when a flutist is in, in a certain area, they have a local technician that they can get to. Um, that's, that's kind of the, the big scope, the goal. Um, so we'll, later on, we'll show you how to find a technician in your area, uh, as well as how to find a dealer. Um, as part of our uh, flute family, um, we do sell direct from Ramatsu America, but we also have a great network of dealers across um, the United States and Canada. Um, I, th I think our number's around 33 dealers right now. And um, they, um, you know, we, we always invite you to visit them. Um, the, most of them have a trained technician uh, associated with their shop. So that's, um, that's a good place to go um, to get your flute serviced if you're, uh, if you're a Muramatsu flutist. These are, um, again, Mr. Shimizu demonstrating, it looks like how to properly float in a trill pad here. Mm -hmm. And um, as I'm sure you technicians online can attest to, it's always harder to do something when you have 10 people watching you. So <laughs> I really appreciate that. Skilled <laughs> technicians are willing to come, you know, fly over to the States on a 13 hour flight and the next day be doing demos at a table with technicians kind of crowded over them. It's really yeah. impressive. They're a mad respect. Well, they're amazing. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so amazing. Good. And they're so <laughs> friendly. Yes. 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 Um, you know, they it's certainly are. Wonderful. It's also such a treat to have highly experienced flute makers look over your work, no matter how long you've been doing it. It's yes. just, yeah. it's worth it and, to go for that alone. I mean, and we it's learned, just invaluable. I mean, it's so great for us too to, you know, have technicians from uh, all these different backgrounds come in and, and we learn things from the technicians as well, as well. It's not just, it's not a one way thing. I mean, we're always learning like, oh, that's how you do that. That's <laughs> great. You know, can, I can't tell you how many pictures I have of taking photos of somebody's special handmade tool oh, that they have in their toolbox. Yeah. All right. Do you mind if I try and make my own of this? Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, up on the screen here, <laughs> this is a little Where's Waldo session because three <laughs> of the screw loose technicians are in here. <laughs> and uh, I won't take too much time. There they are. Yay. Uh, Yay. Adam will be coming to a future session as soon as we can get him scheduled. It's, uh, yeah, I'm a slacker. <laughs> COVID, <laughs> well, COVID's also Pandemic, kind of Adam. Pandem a bit of pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> 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 So. Uh, can I ask a very important question with these pictures? So in the center, you'll see my wonderful friend and colleague, Kirsten Colma, in mm -hmm. the center. She's right excellent. And also, she is holding yes. a Boston Terrier. Who right. is this Boston Terrier? So I'm only 99% <laughs> sure because they've had 
three or four different Boston Terriers. I <laughs> oh, I <laughs> no. see. Oh, no. no. How but, wonderful. Uh, Don't get it wrong, Jeff. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> prior classes would have met Spanky, but I believe oh, this is Spanky the Boston. <laughs> this is Nugget. Yes, because it's my class. <gasps> Nugget. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh. You're you're correct. The yes. only thing this that I cute. questioned was that for a long time Nugget didn't even let anyone hold her. So, oh. Oh. yeah, um, there was some bonding. Uh, That's well, a cute little happened. Boston. Yes. Oh. So, Anyways, yes. thank you. That was important. <laughs> and it is important. <laughs> that was important. That was important. <laughs> All right. Ooh, so, diagrams. Let's yes. get nerdy. <laughs> yeah. We are on a tech talk, so. I was surprised how many players wanted to know like technical stuff, which is awesome because I love yes. it when tech when when players want to like expand their mind and learn all the cool stuff. Uh, Especially if you own one of these, like it's, these are just yeah, cool features no. about your flute. It, totally, it, it, that was great. Yeah, it's uh, it is fun to know what's inside. So <laughs> we'll look at the diagram here, and then I have a couple of pictures that might help visualize some of this stuff. But what you're looking at is a cutaway of a traditional felt pad up top. So you, you took a slice through your key cup, that's what you would see, um, where you have just this little um, pad nut that's kind of like the screw, screw receiver that's soldered into the cup. And then you'd have some uh, adjusting papers behind it. Um, usually there's some full shims and then a number of partial shims that look almost like the old trivial pursuit pie pieces <laughs> to raise up certain sections to try and get that pad to seal around the whole tone hole. And um, the pad itself is, there, there's the cardboard backing, and then there's usually, it's a, like a pressed natural felt wrapped in um, typically two layers of fish skin. Um, and then it's it's a flat washer and a screw that kind of protrudes a, a bit above it. There's nothing wrong with that type of pad. It's been used in so many professional flutes and you can get wonderful results. Um, Muramatsu just saw uh, some potential improvements that they could make and um, it, it was a few design iterations before they arrived at what is currently often called the MA pad um, or magic pad. Um, but the, um, <laughs> the cutaway down on the bottom here shows that pad system. And you'll hear it sometimes called, called a Lotus system because the backing disc here is referred to as a Lotus disc. Um, oops, sorry. Ah, there we go. Um, it, uh, it's, it provides, so it's machined out of brass, and it, it basically is a way to ensure a stable, flat starting point inside that key cup. It kind of anchors the whole system in there, and it also is very durable in that there's a much larger um, contact for the solder, because if you're a technician and you've ever over-torqued uh, a screw that has just a little pad nut, you've maybe heard that little tick as the pad nut lets go and then you're taking it all out and re-soldering the pad nut. I've never had that happen to a oh. Lotus system because... Because we have a really cool screwdrivers as well? Yes, we, we do. Yes. Oh, oh so yeah. <laughs> 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 We'll talk about that in a minute. We have such love for that screwdriver. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, yeah, who knew you could really make a geeky screwdriver, but it, it's a, yeah. <laughs> anything yeah, can numbers, be geeky. Yes, and clicks. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> so, um, so the, the Lotus disc is, um, it, it just serves as a stable backing. And then we, we do still use typically a whole shim or a couple of whole shims to set the pad at the appropriate height in the key cup. Um, so the pad versus the edge of the cup. And then don't, we don't use the traditional type of shimming. So that's really the biggest change, I think, for a lot of technicians when working on the Muramatsu pad. Um, let's go away from the, the uh, diagram there. Uh, although you can see down low, this is a diagram of what the Lotus backing looks like. 
the the design of it got it the nickname lotus because it reminded somebody of the lotus flower um all right so let me zoom out a little bit here here is um some cutaways of the actual pads so there's a little bit of glue on here sorry i i didn't have fresh parts to start with i actually dissected a couple of pads so nice. <laughs> uh, the down down low you have what's inside your traditional felt pad um, this is the cardboard backing it's a um, a piece of natural felt pressed natural felt and then it's wrapped in the fish skin there's with it all being more natural materials, there's more variation just in the pad itself. And there's also more potential for the pad to change with humidity um, as it absorbs just humidity from the air or while you're playing. It can swell in areas and um, sometimes affect how the pad is sealing. The um, Muramatsu pad um, has inside of it this, this brass backing that sets, that kind of um, acts as the seat for the rest of it. So it has a recessed groove. Um, if you can see this, this ring around it, that's, that's a recessed groove that actually mates with the tone hole. So it allows the, the pad to have like an air cushion mm -hmm. to really help um, deal with any kind of slight variations in the tone hole. Um, it doesn't need to rely on much of a, a seat that you sometimes see on a traditional um, felt pad. Um, on top of the brass is a silicone um, bushing and then a synthetic felt, and then finally wrapped with um, two layers of Muramatsu's own proprietary fish skin. Yes, and that's um, so tough. It, it is. It, it is. so tough. <laughs> It definitely, it feels different than, than other skins, mm -hmm. but um, because these are all um, manufactured and um, are more synthetic materials, they are more stable for temperature changes and humidity changes, and they also are very durable. Mm -hmm. you, can, um, you can get pads to last for 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. care. That's not saying that they all last that long, right. but <laughs> there's always, you know, the style of the player, how well they care for it, environment, that kind of thing. But overall, um, you, they're a very durable pad. Mm -hmm. And also, they're less prone to having the sticky sound, which is nice because they don't mm -hmm. see, um, there's not as much of a seat that happens on the surface of the pad. So it doesn't grab the, key, uh, the tone hole as much and make that pretty annoying sound. Mm -hmm. This, it kind of messes with your eyes a little bit on the right with that those blue shims but <laughs> that's looking at um what a partial shim would look like on a muramatsu flute versus on the left which is what you would see typically um under a traditional felt pad they're they're not used often but when necessary to just bring up one edge of a um of a Muramatsu pad, we, we use a sliver on the, just on the outside, um, because you, you just can't have a, a pie shape like this translate through a brass backing. Mm -hmm. It just isn't gonna work, and the, the pad's gonna rock on it. Um, by just acting on, on the very edge, as you tighten the pad screw down against the Lotus backing, it will allow a little bit of flex in, in one direction. You shouldn't see multiples of these around a cup because you're only getting one axis of bend. Um, so, and, and it's not even that common to have partial, partial shims. All Muramatsu flutes are hand leveled so that the tone holes um, are, are almost perfectly level. I mean, if you put a sight gauge on top of it and you have a light on the inside, it's just smooth across the top. So. The system relies on a level tone hole, and then the pads are made level. So you shouldn't need much in the way of partial, sh partial shimming. Mm -hmm. That's just a look at what one of the trill pads looks like. These, this is a tiny little 11 millimeter pad, but they still I love took those. the time to engineer it the same way. It has a, a, a little silver, solid silver reflector in the middle of the pad. That's like 
if, if a pad can be sexy, like that is a sex pad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Remember, I say pads in general. They are. Actually. Like if anyone who's done any kind of machining or any engineer just has to look at that pad and be like, this is cool. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? Well, and there's a specific tool for, for, it, for gauging exactly how much glue. So it's the perfect amount of glue every single time. I mean, it's such a yeah. well thought out system. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you that tool in a couple of slides, I believe. And, um, and under the skin of this, even though it's this tiny little pad, it also has the machined the mm -hmm. brass backing. It has a little silicone bushing and the synthetic felt before that silver. Um, it's really cute. <laughs> and if you ever take one out, keep the little button because that's mm -hmm. silver. So don't, don't get rid of it. Um, all right, another uh, difference that if you don't have access to the right parts, um, you can do damage to a mermotsid flute, mm -hmm. is the, um, the way that the open hole grommets are fit to the key. Um, on most flutes, it's just a metal on metal slight interference fit. That means that the chimney here, or the open hole, um, is expanded just enough that the, the grommet, as it's pushed down, kind of retains itself. And then um, I know some people will kind of pull some wax into it with, with some heat to help seal it. Um, what Muramatsu decided to do, um, not only did they create a grommet that had a kind of a continuous um, curve, a, a lip on it that allowed a continuous curve through the open hole to help with acoustics, but they, um, they have a Teflon seal that fits between the grommet and the chimney to give you the proper retention fit as well as just to seal it. And, um, and there's a special tool to install those and you need to have a little baggie of those Teflon seals because mm -hmm. you don't want to take time cutting them out of some kind of uh, material. Good heavens. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds depressing. Like I said, you don't want to do that. Uh, this is just like a, a little, um, th this shows the jig down, down low. It, it pushes up through the, the chimney. You put a, a seal on it and you take your grommet and kind of capture that seal. And there's actually a, a two-piece tool now, but then you, you push it down on top of it and it allows that Teflon seal to be flat all around and, and um, be a proper fit. Without access to those grommets, I've seen technicians do some pretty terrible things to the open holes, mm. over expand them, or I've even seen somebody kind of make it oblong by squeezing it with pliers. <gasps> no. So, flutists out there, please find an authorized technician and um, make sure that they don't do damage or uh, that an untrained technician um, doesn't do damage to your flute. Because oh. some of that stuff can be fixed and some of it can't be fixed. That's intense. Um, and one other high level difference here is the type of pivot screws um, that Muramatsu uses. They, they changed to what's called a, a conical um, bearing around the same time the pad change happened. So I believe around 2000, um, they went to this. The, the big difference is um, one, it's a, it's a more precise fit, but you have to know how to adjust it to get that precision. Um, on the top with the cylindrical bearings, you just, you screw that, that screw in and the, keys, the key mechanism is just located by uh, kind of the tubing in the posts. Um, the Muramatsu conical bearings here, you can see there's like a 45 degree angle going into the posts and in, in the screw. And so you have to um, pay a lot of attention as you install that key mechanism to just find the point where it starts to bind and then know how much to back it off to leave the proper tolerance. It's a it's an amazingly amazingly precise system, but again, you need to know how to adjust it properly. And um, I think on some makers, you know, there's a tendency to just screw the 
screw the pivot screw in until it's tight. And if you do that, you can actually damage the flute as well. And I think that was one of the um, most important things that I learned at, at the training, um, yeah. because the, the you see that you don't see that on very. I think Miramatsu is the only handmade flute that has that intentional "don't screw the screws all the way" and thing. But it's because of the way that they mm -hmm. manufacture their threads, and so that's precise. why it works, right? So, like, if, if you're a technician and you haven't really worked on Miramatsu flutes and you haven't been trained, your gut instinct would be to make those screws "quote unquote" fit properly. But like, they they do fit properly. It's yeah. just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get to I get to replace a lot of screws based on the fact that somebody else previously just didn't know that that was the system so it's not like fortunately they modified the screw so it's not a big deal mm -hmm. but it's just it's just not knowing so right. right yeah and and Kim as you know then when you replace a screw there's a technique to that as well because mm -hmm. all of yeah, the have... screws come with the threads slightly oversized so there's a technique to cut them down in an adjustable Custom fitting them and custom fitting so that you get that proper yep. um, tightness of fit mm -hmm. as you, um, yeah, as you in install a new screw. Same goes for the um, steels that are threaded. Um, they often need, you need access to the correct starting part and then you need to just make this slight thread um, adjustment technique to get it to fit properly on your flute. Mm -hmm. And there's like four, five, six, different screws they're short and long yeah, and uh, there's a couple different and there's like for yeah. different models and stuff so it is really like one of those things that you have to yes call, don't just make it out. up as you go along yes. no 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 don't make it up as you Often go along get a request for you call, know call miramatsu, and, and call, you know, call miramatsu america and ask them and they will help you yes we if will your attack we'll <laughs> find out what you're working on and we'll get you the right parts yes um this is just a, a quick look at the adjustment screws. Um, all, all Muramatsus now have adjustment screws for the key regulation. I'm happy mm -hmm. about that. We love and, you. Uh, yes, so, yeah. are, so are we. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, the new design on the right, just they went to a much finer uh, thread pitch to allow you really precise adjustments and more thread engagement to make sure those adjustments stay where you set them. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's a look at a few of the specialty tools. Um, screwdriver. It's the screwdriver. Here's the, here's oh the gosh. We have We have so much love for this thing. I, I cannot <laughs> say enough. Nice this, was my, this was my, uh, believe it or not, this, is, this was my present to myself when I went to Muramatsu. This was uh -huh. the only thing that I got is a, like a gift to myself because it is not <laughs> inexpensive. Once you no, do the Canadian not. conversion, yeah. it was. Yeah. It's a bit of a splurge, but. Yeah. Oh, so I use it. it every single day. Me too, all day, every day. Like, like not all just day, summer matsus. It's great yeah. for everything. Yeah. yeah, it's nice yeah. to just be able to have a controllable torque. Yes. Um, yes. And consistency uh, matters. There are. Um, it'll be discussed a little bit later in some of the Q and A, I believe. But um, there's gauges for setting the proper key opening heights, uh, mm -hmm. and I've seen. Flutes come in where the keys are just like twice as high open as they mm. should be. And the customer's like, it doesn't play like it used to. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's because, you know, there are specific settings and um, we cover all that in the training, obviously. But, um, you know, where, what the proper opening is and, and how to achieve that. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's also the, um, Kim, I think you had mentioned the, there's a tool for getting the trill pad set correctly. This is a. Oh yeah. This it's is the also one of my favorite to, little tools. To to level and um, install the correct amount of shellac in a key cup so that the pad sits at the proper height. Mine ran away, and I need to get a new one. Yeah. I will. I will you, talk to Val. <laughs> the key cup protector is for removing um, grommets. This is so that your keys don't get marred. Again, mm -hmm. I've seen people that don't have one really do some damage to keys so mm -hmm. please make sure and it's really it's okay. really hefty too if anybody's thinking it's like the other ones that are available it's like twice as much material yeah mm -hmm. it's also not the um, thing but it yeah. is uh, also not the two yeah but i mean you got one you've got it for life provided yes. it doesn't Unless run away 
And then uh, the leak light at the bottom, I actually bought it from Ikea. So those aren't, <laughs> those aren't special. You can get those around. Yeah, there's tons of options for LED lights now on like Amazon. So um, Muramatsu does a lot of um, key, key regulation, especially with a light on the inside mm -hmm. because the, the way the pad seats kind of precisely, you can get a very good visual reference before you do your final checks with um, mm -hmm. a feeler gauge. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think that's the end of my uh, overview. And uh, I believe we're gonna have some Q&A that people submitted, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Um, so our first question actually comes from Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, Priority question. <laughs> Kim, do you want to ask your question? <laughs> oh, that was so subtle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not very <laughs> suave. <laughs> it's because I get asked this question all the time from people all over the place. So how can you, if you are a player and you don't know, you don't have any connections to, to stores or anything like that, how can you tell who is um, Muramatsu? Um, technician and where to find dealers uh, and all kind of that information. All right. Well, I just happened to have created a slide <laughs> with that. Loaded, loading uh, the map. <laughs> yeah. So on the Muramatsu America website, um, there's two areas I think where this is listed. One under the frequently asked questions because, like you said, people always ask, where can I go? It's a great question. It is. And we're, we're glad that people are asking it and realize that they should go to someone that has been trained. So under either the service section or the frequently asked questions section, you can find a live link um, to Google Maps where, um, you know, it, it'll uh, allow you to zoom in and find somebody. You can search, um, I believe, by, um, mm -hmm. by zip code on there or by name. And... Um, the see the blue dots are technicians that have been trained the additional teardrop burgundy teardrops i don't know what you call those things are uh, pointers to um to our dealers and there are some um some agents around the, the country too technicians that also have um some remote flutes for sale um so we have this is the north american we've also trained um, technicians in South America, because we realize that there's a lot of flutists in South America um, that love Muramatsu, but they just don't know where to take their flutes to. They have even less selection um, of trained technicians than, than we do in the U.S. And, um, and so we're trying to... Canada's pretty sparse up here. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have a couple. We have a couple. a couple in the Toronto area. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Well, we're always trying to um, branch out. So, um, on this website, there is the dealer map. If you're a technician listening to this and you're interested in training, um, you can contact us um, through flute at muramatsuamerica.com. You can email me directly. I'm just Jeff at muramatsuamerica.com. And we can give you more information about the training. It, unfortunately, all of it is suspended right now, obvious, for obvious reasons. Um, I don't know when we'll, we'll be able to start it back up. Um, I'm hoping that when, when it's safe to do so, that maybe we can do more than just one group training session a year and hopefully get some of the technicians that were scheduled to go this year um, that got canceled and as well as new technicians in and through the training. So that's all TBD. Yeah. So, hey, Jeff, I just wanted to clarify um, for anybody who is jotting down those email addresses that it's Muramatsu dash America. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Great. Um, on to the next one. On to the next one. Let's do it. All right. Victoria says, hey, uh, I'm an Australian flute technician, and I have a question. How am I able to buy Miramatsu pads? I have a lot of Miramatsu clients here, and I would love to be able to use their pads when I need to replace one. Okay. Um, for technicians outside of, um, outside of North America, um, in, in South America, the the route for getting pads is to go to the Muramatsu website. So this is now Muramatsu Japan website. And they, um, up in the 
top right corner of their website have a world dealers list. And again, you can click on this um, by your region and see who in your area is a dealer. Um, and the, the correct line of contact is to, um, is to contact that dealer and they should be able to get you parts. Um, we don't ship parts over um, overseas. Um, we only service uh, North, North and South America. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, there's information on the um, Muramatsu Inc. website. And Great. if you just, I can't remember the exact address. I think it's muramatsuflute.jp, but mm -hmm. um, just Google it. Google it. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, Mike wants to know, does Miramatsu still make a wing lip head joint? I played a gold one that I borrowed from my principal flutist for years that matched hers and I loved it. The, um, okay. So the, um, the wing head joint do, is not produced anymore. I, um, I think that ended in the 90s. I'm not positive on, the, on that exact timing, but this is called the Subasa head joint. And it's, it was intended to give the same or, or better performance than the wing head, head joint did. Um, the Subasa is this section, this raised section. So it's uh, on either side of kind of the trailing edge of the embouchure. Um, it, it's raised up a little bit. And the intention is to give you a little bit of um, more focus of your airstream and um, kind of gives you some feedback at, at the embouchure itself. Um, there's, uh, there's not like one size fits all. So I, I would say if you're interested in it, try a standard lip and a Subasa and see which one fits your playing style better because some people love um, playing with a with a subasa, and others say they um, they prefer to just have a standard lift plate. So it's best to try them out. Um, we usually have uh, both standard and subasa um, head joints available on uh, different flute models. We stock many flutes at our um, headquarters in Michigan, and so we can send them out for trials. And you can try them and see which one fits your your style. Excellent. So we actually have a follow-up question from Susan, which is, what does Subasa actually mean? Uh, oh. Subasa means wings. Oh, it's cool. Wings. I didn't so know that either. Very <laughs> cool. It was, it was kind of the, yeah, the progression of the wing, what was called the wing lip, then became Subasa. And, Excellent. Uh, Subasa gives you wings. Very cool. I'm already blowing minds tonight. Just yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and, and we kind of touched on this a little bit, but there's, there's a part two of this. So Anne says, please explain what the Lotus system is, which we kind of did. And second part, though, this is the important part, is how to know if an old Miramatsu flute can use that system. Right. Okay. Um, so um, the, uh, like I said, um, the, the new pad system started around 1999. Um, the first couple of years didn't um, didn't have the Lotus backing yet. There was actually a different type of metal disc in there. Um, but we often get requests from people that have played a new Muramatsu and they say, whoa, you know, what's this all about? Mm -hmm. And um, and they say, can you do that to, you know, to my flute? Um, the uh, certain models of older um, felt conventional felt pad systems can be converted. Um, the models that can get the conversion are either the AD or the DN and some gold models um, that are after uh, 36 for, uh, 400. So that was kind of a changeover point where the, the design of the inside of the key cup was different prior to that serial number and wasn't compatible or isn't compatible with the Lotus system. So um, that includes all of um, what's known as the ST model, or sometimes you'll hear them referred to as standard models. It's a solid silver flute, but the, um, it didn't have the French arm key cups. Mm. It was more of a, a Y arm design, and just the internal of the key cup isn't compatible. Mm -hmm. um, that also includes some of the early um, AD and DN and gold models. They, um, the design was just not compatible with the Lotus. So 
it is possible to convert a lot of older flutes to it. Um, it involves um, taking the um, old pad spud out and soldering the um, lotus disc into the cups, leveling the tone holes, and um, and then there's you know new uh, pad washers and pad screws and everything that goes along with it. We do sell kits to do that um, to train technicians. Um, so. Yeah, and great. Any other questions about that? Or? Well, I, I just want to I want to throw in a question, which is like, well, if I have a not Miramatsu flute, you've totally sold me on these amazing <laughs> sexy pads. Can I put them in my flute that's not a Miramatsu? <laughs> that's that's a good way for your Miramatsu part source to dry up. <laughs> no. We don't sell our no. parts for use on any other flutes. And, and they won't fit. They so, won't fit either. The they sound projection, they, uh, it, it, yeah, they don't, it they doesn't don't. work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's not, you know, um, we are selling our parts only to work on actual Mermatsus. So. Yes. If yeah. you really want the Lotus pads, you should buy a flute attached to them. That's a great <laughs> idea. <actually. laughs> Rachel, I, I like that. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and, and the biggest, the biggest thing is that the Muramatsu pads only come in very specific, go figure, Muramatsu sizes. Yes. So sure. like there isn't, uh, there isn't like a pad range like like you could get with others right. with right. other pad types. Yeah. It's you buy the pads and yeah. they specifically are just for those right. flutes. So it, there's literally yeah. no other flute on the planet that has all of this, those same exact yeah. key cup sizes. There's just no way to do it. Yeah. There isn't. There's uh, just thought of a follow on topic on that. Um, for older uh, Muramatsu flutes, we do sell the, the original style, um, traditional felt pads that Muramatsu had. If you ever order those as a technician um, mm -hmm. and haven't seen the demonstration, yeah. then you're going to be calling Val. <laughs> and you think how they're all the wrong size? And Val's going to say, No, I sent you the right pads. Do you know how to use them? Mm -hmm. Because they need it um, in order to fit into the key cups. Um, if they're dry, they're too large. They're huge. And you're, yeah. <laughs> you push on them and you're like, this is not right. They send me the wrong pads. They need to really be damp and pliable. And then um, there's a technique to yeah. put, put them in very level and, and really try and get a, a, the best starting fit in there and it fills the key cup and the idea with it being slightly oversized is it really um fills everything in all the open open space in there mm -hmm. so it stays stable yep. and is going to hold your shimming on the felt pads yep so that's the reason for it and but we often get calls back saying well you said it's the wrong stuff <laughs> they're yeah. about a full size yeah. bigger than you think they should right. be so yes. if if you're like for techs that, that are kind of going well how big is too big like what are we talking here they're yeah. usually like at least a full size bigger than you anticipate them being yes yep that is true so it's not like just a little tiny bit and you can kind of like no no it's like you put it on the top of the cup and you're like there's no way that's ever going in there yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then so great. Val, what did you do <laughs> and then you get val is never wrong first of all no. second of all true never val knows is, what she's doing we she love does val. yes never argue with val because <laughs> you will lose <laughs> the encyclopedia <laughs> <laughs> so um let's let's go on so oh, yeah. um, you have another question um which is uh has the ds model always come with an engraved d sharp key or are there some older ds flutes that may not have an engraved d sharp key specifically well, around the 2004 2006 time frame i might have known that this question was coming <laughs> and so i called <gasps> val and i said val did the DS ever not have an engraved um, cup? And she said, well, I guess it did. So the, oh, wow. the very early DSs, um, I think, you know, maybe, I don't have an exact year of when it changed, but the early ones from the early 2000s to mid to mid late 2000s had a smooth cup right. before um, oh. elegant engraving was added. So wow. yes, now all, right. now all DS and higher models have an engraved D sharp key, um, but there were ones that didn't. So that's really great to know. Yeah. 
Lots of yep. trivia tonight. Yeah. I love it. Can I be writing it. that in my notebook. It's going to be an exam at the end. <laughs> there, there will be. All right, let's power on ahead because we are swiftly. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. I know it always, it always goes like this, right? <laughs> it's, so it's, let's okay. get through as many as we can. Um, Dave says, "My question is, what's the difference between a heavy wall flute and a regular flute? I hear this terms talked about, but I'm not quite sure what the difference is." All right. So <laughs> we have a chart. Yes, we have a geek chart here. Oh, is it chart? <laughs> um, so uh, a standard wall and heavy wall actually refers to the thickness of all the tubing on your flute. So the head joint, the body, the body tubing and the foot joint tubing. And then on a drawn tone hole model, it's going to have a slight effect on your tone hole thickness as well. Um, so it refers to the thickness of the metal. And you can see in the U.S., we usually talk in thousands of an inch. So um, on the silver flutes, a standard wall is typically 16 thou, and a, um, and a heavy wall is 18 thou. And then um, you'll see the, the gold um, is, uh, it's a slightly thinner wall thickness, but it already has a lot of the resistance that you're looking for in that heavy wall. Um, so yes, what, what does it do? Um, you know, it offers, if you're, if you play with a lot of air and want more resistance on your in your flute, then um, a heavy wall is probably a good fit for you. And um, yeah, that's that's the wall thickness in uh, in a nutshell. Excellent. You yeah. guys have anything to add to that? That was yeah, pretty comprehensive. They're um, heavy. They're heavier. They're heavier. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, like you, you can just you can notice a difference when you're playing them. It's not like you would, yeah, they're yeah. heavy. And yeah, and I would say, you know, if you're not sure, try them both, and you might be yeah. surprised at what you actually prefer. Um, I feel like yeah. there was a period of time where everybody wanted a heavy wall, and then everyone realized that maybe it wasn't for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't really talk too much about um, all the models that that Muramatsu offers, but as a technician, it's always wise to know your models so you know if you're working on a solid silver or a plated key. Yep. Uh, a PTP down here is a solid silver instrument that then has platinum cladding on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, it's wise to fam familiarize yourself with the product lineup before working on it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there is actually one model I left off here. There's a solid platinum flute. Oh my. But I've only seen it one NFA. I can't remember which one it was, but um, they do wow. make a solid platinum flute. That must, wow. Yeah. That must have been heavy. <laughs> I remember, I actually played that flute. Oh, I did remember you? It was at NFA. It was in Anaheim. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Lucky. I remember. All right. I think it All had right. it was heavy. in the crown. Yeah, it was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. So uh, next one? I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, yeah. Well, it's it's up to you. We it, we okay. have technically a minute. Um okay. but we can we can cram in one more or we can wrap Sure, let's up. cram in one more let's and then we can more. save some for the Patreon for the follow up. All right, sounds yeah. good. All right. So uh related, Olya wants to know would a heavy wall Miramatsu head joint fit a regular wall Miramatsu flute? It would not fit. And you shouldn't try and make it fit because mm -hmm. you would have to neck it down quite a bit and it would be a, a, not a wise idea. So yeah. um, you should match the, the head joint and the body. And that the Muramatsu flutes, um, each head joint is hand cut and it's hand cut on that particular flute. Yes, I was hoping So they bring come as a matched set. The Muramatsu philosophy has always been they're a flute maker not a head joint maker. And so um, every, every one um, comes to us as a complete set and that's how customers are intended to buy it. Yep, even to the point that the serial number is engraved on the head, the body and the foot. So you can tell that they all go to, yes. I mean, not the, right? Yes, yeah. they are, yep, they're matched. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Is it possible to get a head joint other than if it was damaged? Um, we have- Realistically? No. Um, it is possible. Yes. Okay. I mean, we've we've had foot joints that have been remade. It you, that would entail sending the flute back to, you know, the factory to have mm -hmm. it actually made for you. Um, there are um, we have a, a few, like a handful of head joints at Muramatsu America because sometimes we'll offer we'll order a flute with 
both a standard and a subasa. Mm -hmm. And right. they've both been cut on that flute, but sometimes oh, there's wow. a spare. That hmm. So are, the, are the subasas numbered as well? Yes. Okay, wow, yeah, fascinating. Cool. Yeah. Nice, very cool. Cool. Um, do, we, do we wanna end there for tonight? Or do you um, keep going a little bit? What's your was there any thoughts? that you like really wanted yeah. to touch on, Jeff? Yeah, right, like this, this is sort of your thing. So if there was one that you wanted to really touch on, let's. I didn't have a preference. If, if, if there's, <laughs> there, if there's maybe a we'll just have to, we'll have to, we'll just have, have to have you, have you come back. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave, we'll, yeah, we'll leave people wanting more. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so Fantastic. let me see if I can uh, Brady bunch us back again. Here, I will yeah. stop sharing. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. I think, so I think that's it. All right. Yeah. All right. Yay, fantastic. Wow, that, that flew by. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You yeah. bet. I uh, I enjoyed it and I'm happy to come back if you uh, if you guys want me to. So. Yes, please. We're totally Absolutely. honored. So Thank yeah, we you. are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, next fun. month, um, you already promised to come back. So <laughs> um, <laughs> gotcha. So, so text if, if we've sucked you in and this is interesting and you want to hear from Jeff more in a tech only format head on over to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash flute tech talk. Sign up for the tech level Patreon before the end of this month and you'll get invited to a live Q&A with Jeff where you can bombard him, well, politely. Ask Gently. Him, gen <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, you'll be muted then, if you're bombarding. <laughs> I, I forgot to add one thing in. So okay. Ooh, please do. Yeah. Yes. in talking about the Muramatsu flute family, mm -hmm. uh, for Muramatsu Inc., Muramatsu America is also a family. So Irvin oh, and yeah. Susan are my in-laws. Yes. And so um, my wife Dana and I are are going to be um, taking over the company as they retire next year and um, carrying next through the same traditions <gasps> of Oof. treating all flutists as our family. Yeah. And um, yeah, and so we we love meeting. All the techs, all the flutists, say hi to us. Um, yeah. or Matsu flute we, need to, flute we need to come visit again so we can play more Sushi Go for the kids. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's, it's, like an, it's an important thing. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thank from the you. bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for, you. for coming on thank tonight. You. And this is just such a special opportunity for us and for all the people who, who are watching. And uh, yeah, let's let's figure out a time. We'll talk where we can get you to come back for another one of the free shows and, and answer more player questions, because I'm sure uh, yeah. we'll collect even more after this. <laughs> all right. That was great. Excellent. Well, Thanks. thank you so much. It was just absolutely wonderful to see you again. All right. Thanks. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you to Bye everyone, everyone. Who's watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.